All right, guys, this is Joe from MBs. And as we know that on the evening of April 6th, uh, as soon as the U.S. Secretary of Treasury Yellen arrived in Beijing, she chose a Sichuan restaurant for dinner. I heard that Yellen took the initiative to ask the U.S. staff to eat Sichuanese food. And in fact, it is not new that Sichuan cuisine is loved by senior officials from various countries. I remember that Obama once came to Sichuan specifically asking to try hot pots. Former British Prime Minister Cameron used chopsticks skillfully at a hot pot as well. And Iron Lady Merkel also personally visited Chengdu a grocery market. She personally selected ingredients for Sichuanese food and learned how to make the famous Sichuan dish Kung Pao chicken. And this meal is certainly not as simple as just eating, of course. So what are the Sichuan dishes chosen by the U.S. Secretary of Treasury and how do Chinese people view her trip to China? First, Chinese cuisine demands precision in cooking and especially Sichuan cuisine. Uh, whether it's dry frying or stir frying, a mastery of the heat is pretty crucial. And this time on her Sichuan cuisine menu, stir fried hollow steamed vegetables, twice cooked pork, I think it requires such precision in temperature control. For Yellen, the U.S. needs to handle the temperature of U.S.-China relations as well ensuring they stay on the course and explore the right path forward for both countries through interactions and communications without stalling and colliding. And Yellen's trip to China has attracted a lot of attention with many details of her use of chopsticks and eat Chinese food being discussed. There are mixed opinions, which is pretty normal. For a long time, from the Trump administration to um, Biden presidency, uh, Chinese people have noticed that U.S. officials being inconsistent when it comes to U.S.-China relations, leading to some Chinese people losing trust in U.S. officials. Chinese culinary culture is an important component of its traditional culture, uh, just like the John Dumplings yell and savored, a very representative of Sichuan's intangible culture heritage. And China has always been welcoming the U.S. officials to taste the Chinese food, of course, experience the traditional culture. The Chinese people also help U.S. counterparts to deepen their understanding of China and Chinese people and respect Chinese rights of development. So, for example, before Yellen's meal, restaurant staff introduced Sanxingdui relics on Earth in Guanghan of Sichuan province, like over 1,000-year-old Song Dynasty porcelain, and presented China's intangible culture heritage through embroidery to her. And political commented as a significant breakthrough in U.S. and China relations on its website. Against the backdrop of a more uncertain and even negative factors in U.S. and China relations during the U.S. late election year, I think Yellen's trip is seen as an important signal for both countries moving towards stabilizing and improving relations. Therefore, I think Yellen's goal of this trip is to strengthen dialogue and communication, avoid misjudgment, promote cooperation, advance the stable development of bilateral relations, and join and tackle uh, global challenges. Like we have heard a lot about the diplomatic words these days, but how much sincerity does Washington hold for this trip? Like compared with the same period last year, there have been no major shock uh, events in China-U.S. relations this year, but the U.S. negative actions against China have not stopped. There is an old Chinese saying goes like, listen to one's words and watch one's actions. The U.S. has launched uh, an endless stream of measures to suppress China's economy, trade, science, and technology, and the list of sanctions against China is growing longer and longer. The recent ASML news has once again stirred up the topic of chip wars between China and the United States. At the same time, the Yellen's visit to China, U.S. Secretary of Commerce Raimondo and trade representatives Catherine Tai were also encouraging necessary countermeasures against China's chip industry while during their presence in Europe. So by saying one thing and doing another, I, th I think the U.S. is sending a more complex message to China and to the outside world. Like making it difficult for China to believe that U.S. has given up its strategic goal to suppress China uh, as an opponent.
I think many of the um, dialogue mechanism between China and U.S. are actively promoted and restored by the U.S. side. I think it shows kind of the realization of the impossibility for the decoupling of these two major powers in the world. Like the U.S. can bear the cost of the comprehensive conflict with China, and China and U.S. will both benefit from cooperation and lose from confrontation. So this is not an empty saying, you know, seeking cooperation, I think, is a necessity for both sides. And it's, it's not a choice. I, I think nowadays Chinese people do understand Americans better, like real actions speak louder than fancy words. So I just hope that Yellen's trip will re actually do some good to U.S.-China relations. So this is Joe. I'll see you next time.